All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. Any good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in to In the Backyard, Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. Today is an exciting day. It's a lovely day, but it's also a Tuesday. So y'all do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today is going to be exciting. It's going to be exceptional, but it's also going to be empowering. So y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Please do that. Let me give a big shout out to those who are watching us on Instagram, those who are watching on Facebook Live. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to 40 and Fabulous. Good to see you this morning. Minister Kim Simmons is with us. Miss Jennifer Smith is with us. Hey, my wife, Pastor Sophia, is in the house. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much for being on. Lyndon Yates is in the house. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much for being on. Miss Lakeisha Ali is with us. Miss Willie Francis Hill is in the house. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Listen, we got started a little bit late this morning because, you know, trying to get our equipment together. Uh, but nevertheless, today is going to be a great day. Shout out to Miss Marucka Yates. Shout out to Miss Melby Yates Pitts, who's on today. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Let me get some of this amazing coffee, and then we're going to get to it, all right? So y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part, all right? Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson, who's on today, too. Good to see you. Yeah, I got to do a better job. I spilled my coffee on my cup. Just looking bad today. But anyway, Miss Crystal is in the house. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, about a number of years ago, a few, I don't say maybe five or six years ago, I was uh, getting on one of my son's cases. And, uh, and I really was lighting into him for some things that he had done that wasn't right. And, uh, and he started to raise his voice. Hey, Velo, good to see you. Shout out to Salilo, good to see you. And he's, you know, he started to raise his voice to me and the first words out of my mouth was, boy, watch your mouth, don't raise your voice at me and definitely don't talk back. And as I started to say, don't talk back to me, instantly my mind went back to growing up in Mississippi. How my grandfather used to say to me, when I get angry or something, he'd say, boy, don't talk back. Don't talk back to me, don't talk back to your mother, don't talk back to your grandmama. And he would say that to me all the time. But I would become confused sometimes when I would go to when we would go to Greenwood to shop. Because we go to Greenwood to shop, and then once we go inside of a piggly wiggly or go inside of a store, we would see a Trevor or a Heather or 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 you know or a Toby acting a fool in the stores. They'd be throwing temper tantrums all over the floor and complaining and crying and screaming because their mother wouldn't buy them a toy, their daddy wouldn't give them something, and they would be talking back to their parents. I'm confused because you know as as you know when you when you us, you told before you get to the store good, when you pull up in front of the store, you tell them, you tell your kids out the bat, don't go in here acting a fool, don't go in here acting crazy, you're not Heather, you're not Trevor, you're not Toby, you're not Johnny, you're not neither one of them, don't go in here acting a fool, you're not getting nothing, don't touch nothing, don't act a fool in here, wherever you act a fool at, that's where you're going to get a whooping at. Th those are the things that we, we told our kids from the start, but here I am, I'm confused, because I'm looking at Trevor, I'm looking at Johnny, I'm looking at Heather, I'm looking at Toby, and they acting a fool in the stores. And all I can remember is my grandfather saying, don't talk back. In that moment of yelling at my son and getting on his case, I'm remembering all of this in an instant. And the thing that popped up in my head is this. The word talks back. The word talks back. I, I know some of y'all saying, but pastor, uh, well, how, how are you going to coincide this? I need you to get this. It's important for you to understand that the word talks back. The word, word talks back to you. See, see, we don't want people to talk back to us, but God uses his word to talk back to you. The Bible tells us like this. You look at the book of Deuteronomy. You look at the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the Bible says that, that Samson's mother, Bathsheba, is saying to him, King Lamiel, I want you to heed the wisdom of my words and 
follow her. Listen to what your words, listen to what my words say. Do what my word tells you to do. And, and her words gives him instructions as to how to be a king and as to what to do and what not to do. Tells him that you cannot be a king who drinks strong drink and you cannot be a king who's doing this and doing, you cannot be a king who does this and you gotta be watchful of this and you gotta be watchful of that. And so the word of God starts to talk back to you. Every one of you, when you've been in a situation that you were doing some things that you should not have done or some things that you were ready to do that you know you should not have done, the word started to talk to you. The word talked back. And there are many people today, you ought to be grateful today that the word talks back to you, that the word talks back to you. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a bad situation. I'm ready to say some stuff that I shouldn't say. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, the word starts to talk to me. I gave you a case in point about, about a week and a half ago. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going down the street. I went to the gas station. I'm coming back past Course Hill High School, coming home, and this lady doesn't see me. I'm at the stoplight, at the stop sign, and she doesn't see me, and she's flying down the street. And when I put up at the stop sign, she gives me this look, and I can hear her, and she calls me the N-word, calls me a nigger. I, I, Rem had to catch himself because I was about to give her the finger. I was about to give her the, you know, this right here. I was about to say something to her that's crazy. I was about to. And then the words started to talk back to me. Well, what did the words say to you, Pastor? The words said to me, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you and speak all manner of evil against you. The, the words said do that. <laughs> the words said forgive those who have wronged and done something to you. The word says that. The word says, so watch what the word will do. The word will talk back to you. And the reason that the word will talk back to you is because the word is preserving you. The word wants to keep you. The word wants to cover you. The word wants to care for you. The word wants to put you in the right position. Watch now. The word wants to bring a course correction in your life. Here I am. I am about to let this woman have it. You hear me? I'm about to let her have it. You understand? And I'm about to scream as loud as I can. You understand, uh, some back at it, and, and was thinking about it at that moment to, to rush behind her in the car and let her have it. But then the word said, don't do that. The word does it. Some of you ought to be glad that the word talks back. <laughs> so, some of you ought to be glad that the word talks back, that the word tells you when somebody has wronged you to forgive them. The word tells you to apologize when you have done wrong. The word, the word talks back. The word talks back. I know we don't want people to talk back to us because of the disrespect, because to talk back to me is a disrespectful thing. But listen to this. The Bible tells us that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even down to the divine, the sonder of soul. And the Bible said it even gets down into the marrow of it. It gets down into the depth of the DNA of your situation. So the word cuts going in and the word's cut coming out. It, it doesn't just cut you, but it cuts out of you what's been holding you hostage. I, I came to tell somebody today, let the word talk back to you. I know, I know we don't want nobody to talk back to us. We don't want it. We don't want our children to talk back to us. We don't want, sometimes we don't want a husband to talk back to us, a wife to talk back. Don't want the people on the job to talk back to us. But you need the word to talk back to you. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter number six, here's what God says to the children of Israel, children of the Hebrew children. He says, uh, tie the word of God around your neck. Tie it around your head and let it hang in between your eyes and between your front lips so, so that you can be reminded of it every day. Well, what is he saying? So the word can talk to you every day. He even goes so far as to tell us to, to meditate on this word of God day and night that we may observe to do what is written therein. And the Bible said, for then we shall make our way success. Then we're going to make our way prosper. We're going to have good success. It's because we let the word talk to it. Pick it up in Deuteronomy chapter number 11. Deuteronomy chapter number 11 says, tie, bind the word of God around your neck. Bind it around your neck. Tie it around your head. Let it drop between your front eyelids so that it can, so you can be reminded of it every day so that it can talk back to you. And there are people today, the reason that the word is not talking back to you it is because you haven't really tied it around your neck. What, Pastor, am I really supposed to tie the word of God around my neck? No, we're talking about that you're supposed to get so immersed in this world to the point that the word is up here in your life. You not realize that the Bible says to us to owe no man nothing but to love him? When you study the scripture out, the Bible says that we are only supposed to be indebted in love and we should be indebted to the neck up. 
So in a sense, the word now should come up to here in my life. It should be up here. It should control everything here. It should control everything in my body. It should control my mind. It should control my emotions. It should control my mannerism. It should control everything about me. But if I don't tie the word around me, if I don't put the word of God in between my eyes, if I don't study it, if I don't read it, if I don't get into it, if I don't, if I don't listen to it, if I don't hear it, then the word won't talk back to me. This is why people can fornicate and not even have a sense of it being wrong. It's because they have no word. Mm. See, the word of God compels you to go the extra mile with people. The word of God constrains you from giving people a piece of your mind. The, the word of God controls you. The word of God, it literally controls you like you're a puppet on a string. It controls you. In other words, I'm yielded to it. I'm submitted to it. Whichever direction that word pulls me, that's the direction that I'm going because I'm sold out to it. So it constrains me. It compels me. It controls me. And there are people today who are watching me that the word doesn't constrain you. The moment you get mad, you're going to give everybody a piece of your mind. You're going to tell them everything that you need, that you've been thinking in your heart to tell them. And then you're going to tell them, and then some, because the word of God doesn't constrain you. The word of God doesn't control you. It's because you won't let it. See, when you let the word of God control you, the word of God will control your mouth. Mm. But what do you mean to control my mouth? See, when, when, when people speak evil against you, rather than cussing them out, rather than flipping them off, rather than ready to fight them, your, your, the word that will come out of your mouth is to bless them. I'm talking to somebody today. See, see when, when the word of God is in you, the word of God will stop you from being angry with people that you should not be angry with. I'm talking to somebody right here because here you are. You are angry with people. You are angry over stuff that happened to you. You're angry over stuff that took place with you. You're angry over this. You're angry over that. And it's because you won't let the word of God uproot the anger out of you and get rid of the anger. So the anger is controlling you because you have not allowed the word of God to uproot the anger. See, listen, the word of God is supposed to replace the anger. And if the word of God is not in me, it can't control me. It can't constrain me. If the word of God is not in me, it can't cover me. I'm talking to somebody right there. You grew up in church, but you grew up in church not getting the word. Not that the word wasn't preached, but you wasn't in no position to hear it. You only went because you was made to go to church. You got water baptized and all of that you sang in the choir. You was on the, you was on the Bible. You was in Bible band. You was in Sunday school. You was in YPW, BYPU and all of that. You was in all of that. You was in the Sunshine Band. You went, you went to summer Bible school. You went to all the Bible. You went to Bible school Sunday, you know, uh, uh, in the summer. All of, you did all of that. But yet ain't no word in you because the word didn't constrain you. From fornicating. I'm talking to somebody today because I need people to understand today that if you can sleep with somebody that you're not married to and it doesn't bother you, it's because you got no word in you. If you can sleep with somebody that you're not married to and it doesn't bother you, it's because you don't have no word in you. Let me say it again. If you can sleep with somebody that you're not married to and it don't bother you, it's because there's no word in you. Okay? Well, what does that mean, Pastor? There's no word in me. See, there's nothing in you to tell you that this ain't right. There's nothing in you to tell you that this is wrong. So now all of a sudden you're allowing the world's mentality to dominate you. And so the world tells you it's okay for you to do this and it's okay for you to do that. And the world tells you it's okay for you to go against the grain. It's okay for you to go against what God has said. It's okay. And nine times out of ten, let me just throw it out there. If you can commit sin like this and sin don't bother you, you probably not saved. Let, let me say it to you one more time. If you can commit sin like this and it don't bother you, you probably not saved because sin should bother a Christian. When I do you wrong, it should bother me. If I mistreat you, it should bother me. If you do me wrong, if you mistreat me, it should bother you. If it is not bothering you, you need to go and check your salvation bank account to see if it's full, if it has something in it or if you're in the negative. And there are people who are watching me today that because there's no word in you, the word can't compel you. It can't constrain you. It can't control you. It can't cover you because you have none of it in it, in you so it doesn't talk back to you. I don't know about you, but, I, but my mama's words talk back to me. Well, what? See, there, there are some things that I did years ago and my mama had some conversation with me about it. 
Now in my age now, at 51 years old, when I when I step out to do something that ain't right, my mama's words start to talk to me. I'm talking to somebody. There's some of you right now who are watching me. Your mama's words talk to you. Your mama been dead and gone for a minute, but her words are still talking to you. Your daddy been dead and gone for a minute, but your daddy's words are still talking to you. Some of you, your parents are not dead and gone yet, but your parents' words are still talking to you. A teacher that you had when you was a kid, their words are still talking to you. Somebody on your job, their words that they taught you years ago are still talking to you today. The word of God talks back. But there are many of us today who don't, who don't, who don't want to hear that. Who don't want to hear that. We, we want to do what we want to do. But you've forgotten that the word talks back. I still remember old sayings that my grandfather used to say. He used to say stuff like this. He says, uh, uh, boat lesson is better. Uh, uh, he, he said, "Ball lesson is better than than learn lesson or talk, le learn lesson, something like that." Because he said he, he would say things like, "If you if you you don't want you don't want to you don't want to pay attention to what what it is we teaching you and showing you, then you're gonna pay for this lesson you're gonna get, and you're gonna learn from the lesson that you paid for." He he would say stuff like that. If, if you play with a puppy, he'll lick your mouth. Like what the heck does all of that stuff mean? And then he would say, if you play with dirt, it'll get on your clothes. If you play with trash, it'll get in your eyes. And I, I was like, man, what the heck is granddaddy talking about? This don't even make no sense. And then when I got older, I started to realize that if you start dibbling and dabbling in sin, it'll get on you. If you start dibbling and dabbling with sin, it'll get in your personal life. It becomes, the Bible calls it, the Bible says, it's like yeast. It, it, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. If you play around with it, it gets in your life. So if the word of God is not talking to you, it is because you don't have it and you're comfortable playing in sin. It, it's, it's like when, you know, when you're a young girl, I, I used to watch my mama do this with my sisters and she do my sister's hair and have the, the beautiful bow rets in their hair to match their outfits on. And she would tell them, don't you go out there and get them clothes dirty. Don't get them clothes dirty. And, and, and I used to think like, when I was a little boy, like, oh boy, they not going to be able to play. How they going to do this? And, and as soon as they go out there and come back, one bow red is missing, hair's out of place a little bit, my mom would be mad. I told you not to do this. I told you not to do that. And, and so, so watch what's happening now. My mama saying, don't, don't go out here and play and mess up the prettiness. Don't, I don't know if prettiness is a word, but don't go out here and, and mess up what I just did. And there are people today like this. Your hair has been done. God has done your hair. You got the bow rest the way you want it. You got the French tip nails, Shirley Temple curls in your hair. You understand? You got, you got it all together. You got your colors. You got everything the way you like it. But here you are. God has worked hard to put it together for you in your life. He's got your makeup looking flawless and fabulous. You got to, he got the best designer outfits on you. It's looking flawless and fabulous. You looking good. I'm talking about you picturesque. Uh, but then here you go and you walk out there and you start playing in the sand, playing in the dirt, playing in the world. And all of a sudden, what's on, what's in the world gets on you. And not only do you, it gets on you, but whoever you're connected to, it gets on them too. Because you have no word. The word of God makes you think. It makes you think. Let, let me say it to you one more time. The word of God makes you think. It makes you think. It makes you think. I don't know about you, but there have been times where here I am. I'm in a store one day, and I'm getting ready to buy something. It's something I wanted all the time. And all of a sudden, the word of God comes into my spirit and tells me, you don't need to get that now. But I need this. You don't need to get that now. And I put it down. And walk out the store saying to myself, I really want that. Stop for a second. Walk back, headed back into the store. I'm going to go get this. And then I realize again, God is speaking to you. You don't need to get this now. I go back and get in the car and go on home. Come back about two days later. And what I was about to pay $300 for was on sale for $100. See, see if I had not listened, I would have been $200 in the red if I had not listened. I'm talking to somebody today. See, this is what happens when you when you have no word. You make decisions based on how you feel. You make decisions based on how you think. You make decisions based on your perspective and not based on what he thinks and what he feels and based on his perspective. You must know that the word of God knows what you don't know. You must know that God has things already set in place for you, things that you don't know about, but you got to put yourself in a position to be able to hear God speak to you. You got to let the word talk back to you. You got to let it talk back to you. I, I know I know. sometimes you feel uncomfortable. 
There's some things in the Bible I'm uncomfortable with. I don't want to do. Well, what you mean? I, you know, I, you, the Bible says to us, if, if you smite me on one cheek, turn the other. I, oh, Rem ain't ready for that one yet. I'm just being honest. I ain't ready for that one yet. And smite me on one cheek, and I'm going to give you the other one, let you hit that one too. No, no, I ain't, I ain't ready for that one yet. I might, yeah, it might go down for real. I, you, it might go down for real. Let me just say it like this. We might go, it might go down for real. I, Rem ain't ready for that part right there. That's some stuff that's written in there. I don't know if I really want to do. The Bible said if, if they sue you and take everything you got, then give them your coat too. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to do that one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. You, you done sued me and took everything I got, and then you just want me to give the last of what I got to? Just go. Rev don't know if he want to do that yet. I don't, I don't know if I really want to do that. You understand? So, But watch this now. I have to submit myself to the word and say, nevertheless, God, not my will, but thine will be done. Your will be done. You, you got to let the word talk back to you. Because it's, it's within the word is everything that you need. You, you got to understand how powerful the word is. The word created the world that you live in today. Here's what God did with a word. He he took the earth that was formed out of that was there, that was formed that was formed in void, and, and he took the world. He took the word and he he created the world that you live in today. He created the stars that you live in that you see today. He created the darkness. He created the light. He created the sun. He created the moon. He created it with a word. He formed man from the dust of ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes another speaking spirit like God. What does he breathe in man? His word. If God would do would use his word to create everything that you see. How powerful is his word really? So guess what I'm going to let his word do? Uh, I'm going to let his word dom me, dominate me. Uh, I'm going to let his word control me. I'm going to let his word constrain me. I'm going to let his word <laughs> I'm going to let his word cover me. I'm going to let his word do that for me. That there have been times now where I wanted to get even. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That, that was time I wanted to get even. Now. Uh, preacher did me wrong. Did me wrong, did me wrong big time. And and I mean did me wrong. I tell you did me wrong, did me wrong big time. I, I ain't know he was behind my back. Dealing with the owner of our building and snaking me out of my building by telling the owner he's gonna pay the owner more money, then I got to deal with all the consequence behind it. And, and and I know business about you. I know secret things about you. I know that you got several women that you've been dealing with and sleeping with that you're not married with. You got one kid by here and one kid by her and one kid over there. I, I know some things about you and I'm about ready to put it in the street because I'm mad at you and I'm ready to put it in the streets and if you challenge to say something, I'm ready to put these hands on you. You understand? This, this is Reverend at that time. This, this is like 2016. Reverend, Reverend at this time. Mad, upset, ready to go to war against you. I'm mad. My family mad. Everybody mad. You done been to my house. You done been, you understand, I done, I, done, I done been there for you. I done rescued you out of trouble. I done did all kind of stuff. I done give you, give you insight and wisdom. I, I done helped you write your sermon together. And you preaching my messages and getting the accolades like it's all you. And, and you do me like this? And so here I am. I'm angry. I'm ready, I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to do something. Go do something for real. And, and I go in the bedroom and I'm angry. I come out the bedroom. I can hear God's spirit saying to me, let that go. The place that I'm taking you to is better than where you are right now. Let that go. Watch now. I had to surrender my will to the word of God and let the word of God dominate me. Had to let the word of God control me. I had to let it. I had to let the word control me. See, if there was no word in me, if I didn't let the word talk back to me, ain't no telling where I'd be at today. The word. You got to let it talk back to you. I know, I know, I know we don't want people to talk back to us because it seems disingenuous. We don't want people to talk back to us because it's disrespectful. It's derogatory. I don't need you to do what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it. I tell you to do it. But you ought to be glad when the word talks back to you. You ought to be glad today that there's some of you right now. You've done some things and said some things that ain't right. Maybe you've lit into your child for something that your child didn't have no control over. And it, and it hurts your child. The word of God is bubbling on the inside of you to tell you to apologize. You, you need to apologize. And you need to be honest with your child. And you have to tell your child, honey, sweetheart, son, daughter, daddy said what he said to you, not because of what you did wrong, but because I was angry at that moment. And I'm sorry that I took that out on you. It's not your fault. It's just something I'm dealing with and I apologize for that. See, see, the word will make you apologize even when you don't want to. The word will make you go the extra mile even when you don't want to. 
The word of God will make you feed your enemies even when you don't want to. Let, let me give you another testimony so y'all get better understanding. I never forget. I'm, I'm, I'm living next door in Long Beach to, to another guy, his wife that I'm going to church with. He don't like me and I don't like him. Now we in church together. He been saved five or six years longer than me. I've been saved 20 minutes. We don't like each other at all. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just learning how to speak. They give me an opportunity to preach. I got to preach a sermon in three minutes. I got to preach the message in three minutes, get people saved, brought down to the altar, laid hands in three minutes. I got three minutes. And he's criticizing everything that I say. Now, you got to remember now, Rev ain't been too long saved. You understand? I ain't been too long coming off the streets or hanging out with Nate Dogg and Snoop Dogg. I ain't been too long coming off the streets. I still got, I still got some hood in me now. And 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 keep it up, bro. <laughs> keep it up. It's gonna be something that you're gonna be able to deal with. Keep it up. <laughs> and so here I am one day. I'm cooking my pork chops. Oh my God. You understand? Cook my pork chops real good. Got them looking good. Got my got my got my vegetables together. You know, got my rice and stuff on the table, on the plate, man. And you know, I used to be a cook in the Marriott. So you know, understand? I know how I know which food goes with what, how to plate it, how to put it on the plate, how to portion it off, and then chop up your celery real, real fine and take it in your hand and thump it on the plate so that it can have some color, so it can have some some look to it. Cause I understand that people don't eat with their mouths, they eat with their eyes. If the food looks good to them, then to them it's gonna taste good. So here I am. I got it all together. You got the gravy right like it's supposed to be. Not some of that gravy you pull out of the package, but this gravy that you done took with the flour and, and the grease and you done mixed it up and got your onions in it and it's smelling so great. That that kind of gravy, you understand, the hometown Mississippi country gravy. I got it. I got it together. Got it on the plate. And, and, and so here I am. I'm cooking for other folks in the house. And the Lord tells me, take that food next door to them. I said, man, I said, yeah. I said God, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I don't take no food next door to them. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I don't take no food next door to you. You do know I don't like him and you don't like me. <laughs> and so, so the Lord said, fix that plate for them and take them next door. Dang it. So now I got to go next door. <laughs> and I take, knock on the door. And when I knock on the door, you know how somebody look, look through the people who see is you and they snatch the door open. And he sees me. I said, hey, man, listen, man, um, I just want to give you guys a plate of food. You know, I, I got a couple of plates. I'm going to bring it over here to y'all. And he looked at me like, oh, man, thank you. So I had him to plate of food. And I turned to walk to my door. I said, I'm saying, man, man I'm going to get his food. I'm going to keep it myself. And so then I take the other plates and take it over there to his other kids and his wife in there and everything. Now I come back. Ain't no more pork chow. We don't, I don't gave it all to them. Now, now I got to go in the cabinet. And I got to bring out some noodles, cause that, that's all, that's, you understand, that, that's what's in there now. I got, I got to bring some noodles out. And I got to put the water in the cup of noodles and go on and peel the package and put the beef sauce in there and put the shrimp sauce in there, and, and you, you understand. And I just gave my food to him. And then I said to God, I said, okay, God, I'm gonna use this plate of food as a seed now. You told me to give it, I'm leaving, I'm using it as a plate of seed, as a seed. And, and so therefore my family and I will never go hungry another day in our life. We'll never be without food another day in our life. You have to provide for us because I done sold a seed. And I had to utilize it at that. And watch now, what I didn't know was they ain't have no food in the refrigerator. They ain't have no food in the cabinets. They really hadn't eaten anything in like two days. I didn't know that. But here's what God did. God knew what I didn't know. And sometimes here's what God will do. God, in order to get you right, God will cause you to do something for somebody that doesn't like you and somebody you don't like. I'm talking to somebody today. See, the word of God knows everything about you. It knows which direction you should take. Job says it like this. God knows the way that I should take. When he has tried me, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. So, so God knows the way that you should take. So, so here's what he does sometimes. He'll cause you to do something for somebody that don't like you and you don't like them. And it's because now he's bringing peace. But not only is he bringing peace, but he's bringing fresh revelation to you. Not only is he bringing fresh revelation to you, but he's taking you to your next level. But you can't get there if there is no word in you. You got to let the word talk back to you. The word talks back. The word talks back. It talks back if you let it talk back to you. It talks back. It talks back. Let me say it to you one more time. The word talks back. 
I, I know, I know we don't want people to talk back to us, but the word talks back. And, and you ought to be grateful today that it talks back. The word will tell you when to keep your mouth shut. The word will tell you when you should speak and when you should not speak. The word of God will tell you what you should say and what you should not say. <laughs> you got to let the word talk to you. The word, if you let the word, the word will tell you what neighborhood to move into if you let the word talk to you. If you're really deep enough to let the word talk to you, the word will talk to you and tell you who to marry, who not to marry, who to let come in your life and who not to let come in your life. The word does it all the time, but here's what we're doing. We're pushing it away. How do you know, Pastor, the word tells me who can be, who's safe in my life? The Bible says it like this. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. When you study it out, let the, what the, word, the word rule means let the peace of God be your guide. Let the peace of God be your umpire. In, in a sense, it said, let the peace of God be a referee in your life. Let the peace of God tell you what's safe to deal with, who's safe to deal with, who's not safe to deal with. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. And there are people you're watching me today and you met somebody. You never met this person before, don't know this person, but you met them one time and you walked away out of that conversation or out of meeting them and saying, uh, something about that person. I, I don't something about that person I don't like. Something about them I just don't like. Other people around you say, oh, they cool. Ain't nothing wrong with them. But something in your spirit is saying, something about that person is not right. I can't put my finger on it, but something is not right. And then you find out weeks later or a few months later that what was on the inside of you telling you that something was not right with that individual was the truth. You found out something later that this was not a safe individual to deal with. That's because that's the word talking to you. The peace of God is ruling in your heart. It's reigning in your heart. It's controlling. It's telling you what's safe to deal with and what's not safe to deal with. But then there's somebody that you met and y'all start talking. And it seems like y'all been friends for a long period of time. It's because your spirit is saying, safe, safe, safe. The word is telling you safe, 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 safe. And many times we reject all of this because we don't let the word talk to us. The word talks back. I'm talking to somebody right there. The word talks back. It talks back. So let the word talk, talk back to you. <laughs> I know we just, I know we put the subject out there. Don't talk back to me. That, that's called clickbait. We just want you to get on here so you can understand, so you can get and, and hear this message. You want the word to talk back to you. The word of God provides for you. It cares for you. It protects you. It covers you. It keeps you. It does all of those things for you. It opens up doors for you. The word of God will even comfort you. And there's some of you right now who are watching me. You need comfort in this season. Whether it's because of the loss of a loved one, you need comfort. Whether it's contemplating the move somewhere, you need comfort. Maybe you lost a job, you need comfort today. Maybe you're wrestling between and vacillating between a relationship. Should I go back with him or should I wait for him? Should I, should I wait for her? Should I go back with her? Should I move on with my life? And you're still dealing with the hurt and the pain? The word comes in and the word comforts you. It, it comforts you. The word knows how to put his arms around you. And the word knows how to let you cry on his shoulders. The word knows how to let you pour your heart out. The word knows how to let you pour it out and tell God how hurt you really are. The word lets you do it. Because the Bible says God is a counselor. Scripture tells us he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. The Bible tells us he's a father to the fatherless. He, He's a friend to the friendless. He, he, he's all of that. He, he's your advocate. He's your lawyer. He's your great and mighty God. The Bible tells us he's our father. He's everything that we need him to be. So he lets you pour out your hurt and pain with him. And many of you today haven't poured your hurt and pain out to God. You've been carrying it for a long period of time. And the word, and the word of God cannot penetrate, cannot get in your spirit because you keep holding on to the hurt. You've got to let the hurt go today. You got to take it and you got to put it on God. So, some of you need, if you're at work today, maybe you need to go take a 10 minute break. Maybe you need to go take a bathroom break, 10 minute break. Maybe you need to go get in your car right now and sit down in your car. And maybe you need to right now just go in your car and sit there and tell God how hurt you are and what has hurt you and what's bothering you and what's, what's messing with you at this moment. Maybe you're at home right now and, and maybe you just need to go in the bathroom of your house. Maybe you need to go in your room and close the door. If you can't do that, maybe you need to go outside, sit on your porch or get in your car. Maybe you need to go in your garage. Maybe you just need to take this moment right now 
and tell God how hurt you are and be honest with him. Don't leave nothing out. And what am I doing, pastor? He knows everything. Of course he knows everything. But what are you doing? You are emptying out everything that's holding you back and everything that's hurting you. The Bible said, cast all of your cares on him because he cares for you. How long are you going to carry the hurt and the pain around before you get rid of it? You're not built to carry this hurt and pain, but he is. So give it to him. He knows what to do with it. He knows how to heal you. He knows how to comfort you. He, he wants to be the shoulder for you to cry on today. So go ahead and pour it out. Even if it's some things that you blame him for, go ahead and pour it out so you can get free today. That's my time right there. I pray y'all are blessed and encouraged this morning. I really could keep going on, but I'm not going to do that. But listen, y'all, y'all, y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite today, all right? Please do that. Uh, get other people to come on and, and watch the broadcast. Um, I'm drinking out of one of Jackie Hankins' cups, but Jackie, I messed it up. I spilled coffee all over it. So this cup says grateful, thankful, blessed. So uh, <laughs> Pastor got to do something with this cup. It looked terrible. So listen, y'all share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party today. But listen, do me a favor and just go talk to God. Whatever you got to do, go talk to him. Even if you might, you might have to write a letter to him. Go write a letter to him. You, you, Pastor, where am I going to mail it to? It ain't about you mailing it anywhere. God knows it. Just go write it down. Do something right now so you can get free. All right. So listen, I got to pray. Let me get some of this coffee, but then I got to pray and I got to get some out of that day. All right. Hey, Miss Shirley Powell. Good to see you. Miss Paulette Martin is on today. Good to see you. Miss Jackie Hankins is on today. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. There's some other people that I've missed. Miss Sheila Roby is in the house. Uh, shout out to her. Thank you so much for being on. Late, late. Sheila Roby is late. We need to take her and send her to the, to the office or something. You understand? Late. Just need to send her to the office today. You know, for some reason, you're just late. I don't know what that is. Miss Diane King is in the house today. So shout out to Miss Diane King. You know, Miss Diane King got so much love to give. <laughs> so shout out to her. Thank you, thank you so much for being on today. <laughs> so listen, I got to pray for you now. Give somebody that day, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name for your peace and prosperity to be released upon your people now. And God, I thank you that as I'm praying now, God, you are uplifting our, our, us today, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for the country of Belize. I pray for your peace and prosperity to flow like a river throughout the country. And, Lord, I call the people there blessed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for my town of Itabina, Mississippi. I thank you that my town is recovering now. And I thank you, Lord, that you're tearing down false leadership and you're replacing it with new governing authority. And, Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. So I call my town blessed. And, Lord, I call the Delta blessed as a whole. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Every home in the Delta, every town in the Delta is blessed now. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Got to give somebody their day today. Today is Mr. Velo Wright's day. Whatever Mr. Velo Wright Jr. wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, gets supplied today is his day today. Shout out to him. Shout out to Eric Coleman today. It is his day. Whatever Mr. Eric Coleman wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, gets supplied today is his day today. And today is Salilo Jones day. Whatever he wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, get supplied. And then today, it's Mr. Lyndon Yates' day. Whatever he wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, get supplied. It's his day today. Y'all show these brothers some love today. Please do that. Show them some love. And uh, man, get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Uh, don't forget it. Hey, make sure you're on the Bible study broadcast tonight. It's going to be a blessing. And uh, man, things are gonna be amazing. Uh, we're in the fourth, we're the last uh, uh, month of the year as we approach 2021. So listen, things are gonna be amazing. Hey, to all of my members, Kingdom Life Faith Center members, you know that we do our end of the year vision casting uh, uh, meeting. So listen, our vision casting meeting is coming up where we cast the vision for 2021. So listen, we are going to be sending information out to you so that you uh, can be ready for the for what's taking place in 2021. So I'm going to need every one of our members to be on uh, our Zoom call, on our uh, Facebook Live, every member. you don't not, This is not a leadership thing. This is for every one of our members to be on so that you uh, can know what's going for 2021 and give you, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and uh, so you'll know, all right? 
So I need you guys uh, to be prepared for that. We'll get that information out to you. And uh, this is for our Kingdom Life Faith Center members. Kingdom Life Faith Center members. Let me put this out here really quickly. Um, when we say it's for Kingdom Life Faith Center members and we give you conference call numbers, that's only for our members. Don't take our conference call number and give it to other people uh, to listen in to what it is we're talking about. That's not a good thing. That's, that's not an integral thing. So this is for our Kingdom Life Faith Center members, all right? So y'all, uh, come on, be a part. And uh, so you can know what's going on going into the new year, all right? So we need y'all to be present, all right? So that's about it. So get your seat in the ground. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Hey, you can also sow uh, to the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign Pastor C. Perryman. Again, Pastor C. Perryman. For my wife, it's the dollar sign Pastor Sophia. So get it in the ground today. And uh, thank y'all so much for tuning in. And uh, we will see you guys uh, tomorrow morning. See y'all tomorrow morning. Well, no, see y'all tonight on Bible study, all right? So listen, y'all come on, be a part of Bible study, all right? Love y'all. Gotta go. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name.